Hi there, my name is Matti Sulanto and in this video I'm gonna make some noise. Not audible noise, but some visible noise. But before I start making the noise, please consider subscribing to my channel and tap the bell right there so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. And I usually post a new video two times a week, on Tuesdays and on Fridays. In this video I'm going to explain why in the first place you should try to add some noise or grain to your pictures. Then I'm gonna explain how you can do it, because believe it or not, it's not always that simple. And then I'll have a Lightroom preset for you guys if you want to try this for yourself. And then I will explain some of the creative process that I go through when I try something like this. And then I will explain what kind of equipment and what kind of uh, subjects work the best for something like this. But now let's get started. So why would you try adding noise or grain to your pictures? I think one reason is just to try something different. Because minimizing the noise or getting rid of the noise is um, almost like a trend and many people are obsessed about uh, getting rid of all the noise. But the noise can be a creative element in your pictures and maybe you've not even tried something like this before. So there's one reason for you to, to try this. And another good reason is just try to have some fun with your camera and forget about all the technical perfection and sharpness and all that for a moment. I think if you're too obsessed about the technical perfection the content can suffer because you can't concentrate on both. You are concentrating too much on the camera settings and uh, getting everything sharp. And then at the end, the picture is boring. So I think this kind of process that I'm trying to explain here can be a lot of fun. Back in the film days, photographers used grain all the time as part of their content. And they chose certain types of films and certain types of processing methods to get their desired uh, grain. But of course, bad, the difference is that back then, especially if you were shooting 35 millimeter film, you pretty much had to accept some sort of grain in your pictures. But today, of course, with our digital cameras, we can choose. We can take one really noisy picture and right after that, we can take totally noiseless, clean picture. And then, of course, we have some also some post-processing techniques that we can use to add noise or grain to our pictures. So traditionally I think uh, grain is uh, like part of uh, the content in a photograph. Not maybe in every photograph, but I think sometimes uh, we, you, everybody should uh, try it and see if we can make uh, the noise as part of, or grain as part of our image content and if that makes our images a little bit more interesting. There's one reason to try this. But now let's see how you can do it. So, how to make noisy pictures. At first it sounds really easy. Just crank up the ISO and start firing away. And in low light it's pretty much like that. Very easy. But in bright daylight, it's not that easy at all. You just can't crank up the ISO as far as you like. For example, I was using ISO 12800 for my pictures. And in bright daylight, I was all the time at f22 and 1 thousand of a second. So you see, without an ND filter, you just can't uh, crank up the ISO as far as you like because you run out of f-stops and shutter speeds. And then there is another problem, because uh, the camera sensors generally perform better in bright light than in low light. So even if you crank up the ISO, you will not necessarily see that much noise in bright daylight compared to the noise you would see at the same ISO in low light. I was using the GX880 for my pictures and I was, like I said, at ISO 12800 all the time. And uh, while I can certainly see that there's noise in the pictures, but the noise is not 
rough and overwhelming that I was kind of uh, hoping for or looking for. So in the end, I ended up making a Lightroom preset that adds some grain to my pictures. And the Lightroom preset is here, so feel free to copy them and uh, try them if you are interested and you don't want to create your own preset. The preset will not touch white balance and uh, exposure settings, except that it will add contrast. Then it will add some vignetting and also some grain, of course. Bear in mind also that after you apply the preset and if the result is not what you were hoping for, you can always move the sliders back and forth and try to get the result that uh, you are happy with. But I still recommend you use as high ISO as possible on your camera. Because at least to my eyes, the results looked much better when my pictures had some like bass noise in them to start with. The preset works better or the, the outcome is better if the image already has some noise in it when you apply the preset. But of course, feel free to experiment and try different settings and uh, only you know what works best for you or for your pictures. I also recommend you to shoot raw because cameras JPEG noise reduction tends to be way too strong. There is no clear crisp noise in high ISO JPEGs. And of course RAW also offers you much better flexibility in post to fine tune the tonality of your image. And then about the creative process uh, what comes to this workflow or any kind of workflow. It's very important to visualize ahead what you want or how you want your pictures to look. With this particular workflow, if you're going to use this preset and you have this grainy look um, like in your mind, then it's important when you go out there and look for anything to shoot, it's important to kind of think how this particular subject or scene would look um, in grainy format. If you go out there and just shoot a bunch of images, then you come back home and apply this preset or some other filters to your pictures and hope that uh, those filters or presets are going to make your image somehow better or great. It's not going to work. You have to think ahead and you already when you are shooting, you have to think about the, the end result. Think about how you want your pictures to look whatever preset or whatever workflow you are going to use in post. And now I'm going to tell you which cameras and which subjects I think work the best with this particular preset and workflow. Okay, first the camera gear. I tried the GX880 and the G90 and also the S1R. But I think I couldn't take advantage of the benefits of a full frame camera in this one because I couldn't really use very wide apertures and also I was not looking for really fine detail or maximum resolution in these uh, photographs. I ended up shooting all my pictures with the GX880 which seemed to work really fine but the results were pretty similar on the G90. This was just a little bit more convenient to carry with me when I was shooting. That was the only reason. I didn't try any APS-C camera because there is no APS-C Lumix camera. But I still think the sweet spot um, what comes to camera and sensor sites in, in this particular scenario is a micro four thirds camera either with the 20 or 60 megapixel sensor. I think the noise characteristics of a Micro Four Thirds sensor are just about perfect for this particular uh, scenario. And I also liked how the kit lens looked when stopped down all the way to f22. The diffraction softens the image just a bit and in backlight situations the lens gives me these nice uh, reflections or whatever they are that look like light rays going all over the uh, place and those look really cool at least to my eyes. Some of you may ask why not just use a phone camera if the end result is gonna be a grainy mess anyways. 
Well, of course you can use uh, your phone camera and uh, experiment with that. I just think a real camera is so much nicer to use and you can change lenses and the overall shooting experience is so much better on a real camera. And then the subject, what to shoot? In this one, it doesn't make much sense to look for some fine detail scenes because you will inevitably end up with a picture that's grainy and lacks fine detail. So I think it makes sense to look for scenes or subjects where colors and shapes and light play a major role. And try to compose with those elements maybe some abstract the looking uh, compositions and also remember that flat surfaces like maybe just blue sky or any flat uh, surface, uh, flat color surface becomes more interesting with, uh, with the grain in it. So um, even a big large flat uh, like area in your picture can become interesting instead of being just a big uh, flat uh, negative space in your picture. But don't just take my word for it, experiment and see what comes out. But what I just said is a good starting point if you've never tried this kind of uh, assignment or this kind of photography before. I hope you will try this and I hope this gave you some inspiration and motivation to go out and have fun with your camera and uh, if you try this, please let me know in the comments down below how it all turned out. And uh, thanks so much again for watching. But before you go, please take a look at maybe these two videos. And I'll see you in the next one.